Hang on, hang on. What? What? Hi. How's it? How's it? How's it going, everyone? I, I, I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome back aboard the Nostalgia Train. Wait. Computer's telling me to hang on. I haven't even. I've half booted up the game. I put in the time, and this happens. What? Before we get started, can I just say something? Uh. Okay. Thank you for actually setting the clock both times you boot the game. How do you know I'm actually booting it up accurately? A lot of people don't take this step seriously. Gee, I wonder why. They just leave the clock set at 12 o'clock and call it a day. But you're actually taking the time to set the clock, and I appreciate that. That's how I know that you care about this experience. You're paying attention. No, he's not. Hey! I literally just looked down at a clock and it said 3.39. I mean, now it says 3.40, but... Is it 3.39? Your clock is different than the one on here. I think Fox is scolding me over a clock that my computer has. Now it says 3.41. Okay, it's probably like 30 seconds apart or something. I don't know. Anyway, well, I don't even have any way of knowing if the times you're setting are correct. Yeah, you do. I'll tell you what. I'll make you a deal. What? Since you've been so cooperative, next time you boot up the game and see this screen, just set the clock to your favorite time. Next episode, you'll see what my favorite time is. I don't know it yet. We'll find out next time. Sounds confusing. I think Fox just said her birth time. No, it didn't. Date. No, that Whatever. is... Whatever. That is the time of day I was born, just the military time. Well, then, yeah, I was right. Ugh, Pink Fox is trying to correct me on things I know I'm right about. No, you're not. Ugh, let me focus. No. Too bad. Pink Fox is distracting me. Too bad. Go ahead, pick whichever time you want. Even if it's not the correct time, you've earned it. All right, I'll let you get back to the video game now. Well, what, about, what, 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 what was I just doing just now? So the goal for this time is actually to just... So we'll do the wrong things down the right path. If you don't want to know what I mean, you'll see in a sec. We're skipping the intro, though, because we've already seen that. Okay. Trophy earned. Welcome back. Uh, thanks. Are you afraid? But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. Oh. Uh -huh. Make a decision. What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? Oh, death. I've never been trained for that. No. I can't fit this under death. Go anywhere except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing and I guess. Will Nothing will break me. Yeah. Here I can be happy forever. Oh. I will be happy. Can I, all right, can I earn the, the ability to jump? Spent days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure beyond any doubt Oop. was that if he waited long Oop. enough, the nope. answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Yep. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. That, yeah, okay. That's it. We did. did <laughs> I think the only thing that's going to be speaking to me is Pink Fox, okay? And maybe you, but no one cares about you. Ooh. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Nah, no I want to climb on these Stanley chairs. Looked. I'm going to do the opposite of what you... Ah! How is my head not hitting the ceiling? Right. I'm gonna 
jump out the window. <laughs> I want out. Wait. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then came to the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game oh. structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? It's a blank white area with, once again, no one to talk to. Are you sick of this gag? Um. Okay, I'm going to say... I'm gonna say no first. Ah, then in that case we'll continue. But now here comes the real question: What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you I don't think know. It would have been particularly different. Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Would it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly, this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to avoid all the narration? Oh, Leave me alone, dude. You've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So now it's the other way around. Think, which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Am I? The other option is now you won't shut time. up. Then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. Thank you for shutting up. Let's find out what happens when we come back. Let's see. Let's go ahead and say yes. I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just restart the game any old time you want. Like Fry, you asked. Now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. So, just to push... You know what? Fine. You, you want me to restart the game? Boom. Never going back there again. He won't leave me the hell alone. I shut the door, he doesn't leave me alone. I jump out the window twice, he doesn't leave me alone. All of his co and there's the voice again! Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, a freaking cow man! When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. When I'm doing what you're saying for a second time, you're still not leaving me alone. Feeling a wave of disbelief, I in the room Stanley closet. decided to go up to his box. Coming to well, I'm going place, downstairs. Stanley maybe that. Maybe if I go lower or farther away from the freaking bull crap that's up there, maybe then I won't be able to hear him. To hide in here. Well, what is this? What is that? I cannot read that. What does that note say? Hey, editor, can you read it? If you can zoom in, tell, try to zoom in on that. See if you can find out what it says. Okay, if you want to read that, if you can, pause it. But if he said no, then I guess I don't know. Okay, moving on. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He yep. considered the possibility of facing a and he's still here. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. Oh. And then something it's occurred. This ending. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe Jeez. I am crazy. 
all of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all none of it made any logical sense and as apparently as as this he began to make other strange observations for example why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went and for that matter these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar yeah repeating. pretty sure i'm going nuts himself, this is all too strange this can't be real and as I'm going nuts because you won't shut the hell up and leave me alone time, he just hadn't found the words for it i'm dreaming yes. oh yeah that's totally what's going on oh what a relief stanley felt to have finally found an answer an explanation his co-workers weren't actually wrong he wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. Yeah, okay. I suppose I'll Hearing a voice in my head that no matter what I do, I can't get away from. That's totally not crazy. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying. And I mean, I get the idea of a lucid dream. You think, what? Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he was still not woken up. I actually do kind of like this. So lucid. And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's mind. One yeah. Was amazed he what with that? Himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it some kind of purgatory. I'm dreaming about a voice right. describing me. Oh, I'm ready for a psychological bullcrap thing. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all Wait. people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, One, this was not a dream. Two, How could it be? B, was four, B. B. Why B? Why not three? Sleep, he doesn't have to take it's like someone was bored and drew a line on the three to make it a B instead. Right now, that he's ever been in his life. Huh? Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain beyond a doubt that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. Oh, he no. would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes. And he ends up killing himself, he invited right? Himself to wake up. Oh, no, it's just closing his eyes. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside. Uh, hello? Am I alone? And so it came to pass. Nope, the voice is still there. I'm not alone yet. I wish it to be over. Can I Let be me alone? To my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please. It's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life. That, you know what? That would be nice. I am normal. But I want this butthole to leave me alone. I am. No, I'm not. I want that voice is still going through my head. Get me out of here. Stanley began to scream. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. I have a voice in my head. It won't leave me back alone. Why is the screen going red? And everything went black. Oh crap. Alright. This is the story of a woman named Mary. Oh right. It's it's been a while. Don't judge me. Gathered her belongings and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had okay. started through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. She just looks down at me dead and she's like, This hmm. was even me. Everyone. Yeah, that guy was going insane. Someone was in his head wouldn't leave him alone. Yeah, that's why he's dead on the ground. Yeah, that, that's, that's the reason, because he wouldn't be left alone by a voice in his head. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, that's that's totally what she's thinking. In a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day with very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and, by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. Okay. She turned and ran. <laughs> the body, the body scared her so much she had to get out of there. <laughs> All right. Next. Coming to a staircase, Stanley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Voice in my box. head that won't leave me alone. I thought that last one would do it, but obviously not. Hmm. What's over here? Oh, hello. To be rich, is it a crime? To be rich, is it a crime? Is it crimes? Is it a isn't it rich? What life it would be to have to pick just one. That's random. I feel like that's utterly obscurely random. And There's no significance of in here. I actually know what the elevator does, and it's absolutely nothing. I do not want to see that room again. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an yeah, yeah. Of Watch this. I'm going to skip over your dialogue. Unraveled, Stanley wondered if Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. The narrator was bugging me so much that I couldn't let him talk. For a few moments, with some calming New Age music. Actually, the New Age music isn't that bad, quite frankly. <laughs> ah, moment with. Without narration. And rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward. I thought I got rid of you. I thought that would finally do it. Dang it. Alright. So there's an ending I said we get last time that I kinda wanna get for this time. So that ending is a little bit complicated. I had to look it up to do it, to know exactly what to do, but deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It I don't want a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Oh yes, it will. See ya. Stanley actually got back into the elevator <laughs> and went back up to his room. Yeah, what are you talking about, boy? You're crazy. He knew that it would just be back to his boss's office. Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. I thought he was the narrator. Shouldn't he be narrating exactly what I'm doing anyway? He shouldn't be telling me where to go. She should, he should be narrating what I'm doing. All right, back down. Or not. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for Shut up, smart ass. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. <laughs> okay. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? Because I'm trying to get away from you. I want you to leave me alone. And back up. 
Maybe I can lose him while going up and down and up and down and up and down. We're going to go forward down the spooky corridor. No. Yep. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. Has hat, shut up. I know it's the boss's office. That's not where I'm aiming to go. Oh my gosh, the boss's office. Yay, he's not here. It's the boss's office. Ooh. <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. <laughs> To embrace this I was about to say he finally left me alone, but here he no. is. No, wait. No. I need more time to process. I'm afraid to say it because I'm pretty sure he hasn't left me alone. Anticipated. I mean, oh, sure, gee, I wonder. Obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even... At this it. point, it's more than 30 seconds, Just dude. I have a clock in front of me. Damage damage like we discussed at the beginning of the episode. Of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. All right, you don't like the repetitiveness? Change it. When I push up... Don't make me go to the boss's office again, you idiot. Okay. Huh? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. That's the... Hmm. You know what? What? I just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a minute. What? Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. Yeah. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting and I can tell you what's at the top of the ele elevator. That's the wheel trail. The boss's office. Feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? Oh, boy. There we go. Oh boy. So much more I regret everything. It seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big okay, yeah. explosive moments <laughs> flung right in their faces from the very moment the scene gets started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? To have to think and to anticipate and then to marvel at the eventual Where is this coming from? This is storytelling. Okay, can I get off now? You and I are You're not leaving right me alone. Now. I want off. I want off. I, want I, I will break down the doors and jump out if I have to because there's, really an, there's something the right there. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time, and we well, there. all know it. Which is why we're there. so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. Yeah. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a rule. Yeah. You know. <laughs> people look up to you. Which is why... Oh, I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you so that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not what? much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. 
I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. A good way here. Um, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. Okay. Ah, yes, here it is, just through this door. All right, are you ready? I've told Stay. them you're going to speak Welcome a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay, it looks like they're ready for you. Now I, I want them to them. shut up even more. Right. Right. Okay, then. Well, that, uh, that was an experience. All right, well, that's that ending, I guess. We'll pick up the rest of the left door endings next time. For right now, though, I'm going to leave this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of The Stanley Parable. Uh, Ultra Deluxe, can't forget that part, especially for this particular one. If you liked it, make sure to push that like button. It's so pretty, you can't see it anymore. And if you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. Have a suggestion for an indie game you'd like to see on here? Let us know in the comments below. There is one that's already been suggested, and I'll get to after this, hopefully. Um, but click the link in the bottom right hand corner, try and take one of those indies that have been already done. If you missed any of the stops on this right, click the link across right here, and the train will take you there. In the meantime, this train's off to its next destination, but we hope to catch you guys in another ride. Bye!